Welcome to a new episode of our video series Tech Talk and to our first video in 2022. We are heading into the new year with a fascinating topic from the field of advanced driver assistance systems and we're standing right in front of our main attraction. Today I'm going to speak with two experts and I'm starting with André Fischbeck, sales expert at IPG Automotive. Welcome André, thanks for taking the time. Tell us more about today's topic. Thank you Anna, my pleasure. Today we are talking about the vehicle in the loop technology which is located in the area of ADAS AV testing and development. This area normally has a pretty high amount of test cases which need to be conducted as the functions that are being developed are most likely safety critical or pretty complex from a scenario perspective. Therefore we have created the vehicle in the loop to complement our product portfolio. Vehicle in the loop sounds promising. Can you give us more details? What is special about this method? Yes, of course. So with the vehicle in the loop approach, we merge the real world and the virtual world. So we take the benefits of both worlds and put them into the vehicle in the loop. The real world has the benefit that we are having a finished system or also prototype maybe, which is acting to conditional environments from a proving ground. So it's pretty realistic and therefore we will get the best vehicle dynamics behavior or the most realistic one. On the other hand, the virtual environment um, can be easily set up and also modified. So therefore, the vehicle in the loop combines those two strengths. In your opinion, what are the main benefits of this technology? Or rather, where can potential customers really benefit from Will? As I already said, we are trying to merge the benefits of real world and virtual world. And therefore, we are feeding information from virtual scenarios and sensor inputs to the bus system of the real vehicle. So therefore, our customer can save time as well as money in the end. So first of all, think about what is required from a proving ground perspective. We are standing today just on a flat white space and the vehicle in the loop will now react to a virtual scenery so you don't need special lane markings for different countries, you don't need dummy buildings, you don't need any targets which are driving in front of the vehicle with pedestrians, cars or maybe cyclists because all of that is covered in the virtual world. Secondly, if we look what the Ford Cougar has included. For example, you could start in the beginning at the morning with a parking scenario with just parallel parking, a car in the front and a car in the back. So, and then after you're finished, you can move on to a traffic jam assist on the German highway and afterwards doing a junction or a crossing scenario in any metropolitan of the world like Tokyo, New York or also in Eastern Europe. And then moving on, uh, in the end of the day, you could also do your lane keep assist on any curvy country road in the world. So therefore you save a lot of lead time and setup time that you normally require in pure real world testing. And last but not least, the most important point is you can really increase the robustness of your function. Let's take the, um, the parking scenario that I've mentioned before, you could start with a vehicle in the back at the beginning so that you're having classical inner city parking scenario. And once these tests are done and your calibration is over, you can uh, modify this object to maybe a goalpost. Also a kid um, crossing uh, in the back of your car can be easily set up and you don't need to modify your overall scenario. So therefore the robustness of the system can be increased and those are the main benefits from my point of view while using the vehicle in the loop technology. So you already explained that the prototype communicates with the simulated environment. Now I would like to look at the technical equipment necessary for this. Our second expert is Daniel Motok, product manager at IPG Automotive for test systems and hardware. Welcome Daniel. Tell us, what technical equipment is necessary for the communication between the prototype and the simulated environment? Can you show us? Yeah, sure. Let's take a look at the equipment in our demo vehicle. The XPEC4 real-time system, which is the heart of the setup, because this is where we run the simulation. A Nuke PC, where the visualization IPG movie comes into play. A power supply via backup battery. Our ultrasonic sensor boxes to test the parking function of the test vehicle as well as the EMU unit to measure the actual position on the vehicle 
This one is from Genesis Electronics. Furthermore, the DGPS unit is responsible for correcting the data generated by the EMU unit. It is so precise that the position of the car can be measured to an accuracy of one centimeter. Inside the vehicle, there is also a monitor hill set up, basically a simple monitor that shows the simulation with IPG Movie. On the opposite, attached to the strut of the setup, there is the original vehicle front camera that records the image. The camera is calibrated to the initial mounting position on the windshield. Apart from that, additional plug-in connections can be mounted to the vehicle via these supports. On the one hand, the parking sensors can be accessed this way. On the other hand, they allow to replug the camera depending on the other's function to be tested. Furthermore, the vehicle can also be driven in regular road traffic. Thank you for showing us, Daniel. Let's hand it back to you, Andre, and focus on this setup right here. Which ADAS functions can be tested with the VIL technology based on this equipment? So our demo VIL that you can see right here um, supports lane keep assist as well as in parking assist, an adaptive cruise control and an autonomous emergency braking system. All of these features can be directly shown at customer site or also at a neutral brewing ground. We, we could also support other ADAS functions. That's totally depending on the vehicle under test that we're receiving. So for instance, if we receive a different, uh, uh, a different vehicle from another customer, we could also support a traffic jam assist or something like that. As far as I understood, the vehicle in the loop method is extremely versatile. Can you show us a practical example right now? Of course. If we're taking, for instance, the autonomous emergency braking system, which is included into our demo vehicle in the loop, the system in general works with the inputs of a camera sensor as well as a radar sensor. So therefore, the system is able to detect all objects within the field of view and therefore also calculate whether an AEB is necessary or not. We are now taking um, the camera into the trunk of the vehicle where a monitor is located and we are taking an identical camera just capturing the screen in the trunk. For the radar system we have used our radar hi-fi technology which is fed into a real-time system um, and then calculated according to the needs of the camera ECU where it will be feed to. The camera ECU then does the object tracking um, and detection and issues an object list to the ADAS ECU. So in our demo example, if we look at the scene that we are having, we are approaching a, sm a slower traffic participant. And as we are entering with way higher speed, the AEB system will react to the slower traffic participant in the virtual world and issue an emergency braking system with the demo vehicle. Thank you, André, for your valuable input. I think that the VIL technology will be decisive for the future in the field of ADAS and especially with regard to Level 3+. The developments on the market are incredibly dynamic right now and the VIL technology could help to push those developments even further. Definitely. As I said many times uh, during the video, especially safety critical and really complex scenarios can be easily set up and conducted with the vehicle in the loop technology and therefore a corner case identification can be done. So you can identify with the will which are the really critical test cases that you should do with your overall real prototype to get a safe and robust function. If you're interested in any demonstration of our demo vehicle in the loop, please feel free to reach out to me or also my sales colleagues from IPG Automotive. We would be gladly coming to your side to give you a demonstration on our vehicle in the loop technology. To request a live demonstration, you can either send us an email or get in touch directly with your sales contact at IPG Automotive. We hope that you enjoyed this Tech Talk. Should you have any questions about this or another episode, feel free to contact us. Otherwise, see you next time.